Are you guys ready to play some tennis today? But before we can play some tennis, we must make sure that we are warmed up and ready to go. We'll start with 15 seconds of jumping jacks. So when you're doing your jumping jacks, make sure your hands go as high as they can and back down and keep on going. If it is too difficult, just slow down your pace and just see and just try to see how much you can do in 15 seconds. Good job guys. Now we'll be running on the spot for 15 seconds. Make sure you got some space around you and some amazing exercise for those people that are stuck indoors. While you're running, you want to try getting your knees to your chest and you just want to keep on going for 15 seconds. Again, if it's too hard, you can slow down your pace, but if it's too easy, you can speed it up. But remember, do it to your own pace. Now we'll be doing some right arm stretches. So extend your right arm past your chest towards your left side and with your left arm just hold it back and you just want to hold this for 15 seconds. Really important we stretch our arms before we play tennis. Now that we're done that, now we'll just do some left arm stretches for another 15 seconds. So again you want to just do the same thing we did last time but with your left arm. Just want to breathe in and breathe out and relax while we do these stretches. Now we'll be doing some more right arm stretches but now we want to take our right arm and we want to stretch it behind our head. As you can see here and with your left arm you just want to grab it and just make sure you give it a nice stretch. Now that we're done that we want to do the same thing but on the left side. Again I think I've said this multiple times but it's very important that we stretch before we play tennis just to avoid any injuries or any sort of pain or discomfort. Now we'll be talking about tennis grips. I know it's been a while so we'll go in more depth. So as you can see we have a racket here. And for a forehand grip you want to hold your racket so that it's straight and you want to take out your hand and you want to pretend that you're giving it a handshake. And that is how the forehand grip works. But you also want to learn how to do a backhand grip. It's the same as the forehand grip, but now you want to put your other hand on top of your first hand. And now just spend some time going from your forehand, backhand, forehand, and back to backhand. Now we'll be trying to balance the ball while just standing still. So first, as you can see, we just want to have the ball in a racket and we don't want to try to move too much. Again, if you keep dropping the ball, it's okay. Just take it back and try to beat your time. But if it is easy, try just moving it up, down or side to side. Now that we're done that, we'll be balancing the ball, but with a twist. We're going to add movement to it. We just want to walk around, you want to walk forward, backwards, however you want to. But if you are stuck indoors, then I know that you're limited. If you are able to move around, try taking just little baby steps, maybe a little baby step forward, a little baby step backwards, a little like one or two steps to the side. Just, just do what you can. But if you cannot and you are indoors, just try to just move your racket up, down, left, right without actually moving yourself. This would be a good way to practice. Again, it is very important that we are used to being able to move around with the, with the ball and just balancing it. This is a good way to get a feel for your racket and its contact with the ball. It also helps a lot with focusing and concentration. As you can see, sometimes the ball starts to go left or go right. So you really want to make sure that you have a good grip, not too tight, but again, you don't want to make it too loose where the ball would fall out. Now that we're done that, we can try working on our backhand balance. This time again, for just another 30 seconds, we want to balance the ball, but on our backhand. But if this is too hard for you guys and, the, and you can't really find a way to manage on your backhand, you have two choices. You can continue to try practicing it on your forehand or you can try holding it with two hands on your backhand side. And if this is too easy for you, try moving left to right 
or up and down. Again, this is a, make sure that you're standing still with your body straight and you know, you don't want to lose your concentration and try not to make the ball fall down. Now that we're done that, we'll try to be balancing the backhand, but this time we'll add movement again. So as you can see, it is a lot more difficult, but if it is way too hard for you guys, again, you guys can try doing a two-handed backhand or you can just try going back to your forehand. Again, if you drop the ball, it's okay. It's an extremely hard exercise, but just stay determined and just pick the ball up and try to move around again. And for the people that are stuck indoors and you can't find a space to move around, it is okay. Just try holding the ball on your racket and just make and move your racket up and down and left and right. If it's easy, do it as fast as you can without dropping the ball. And you just want to just keep repeating this for a minute. As you can see here, even I dropped the ball and everyone makes mistakes. But we just want to keep on going and finishing the exercise. Good job for finishing that one. Now we'll be trying the forehand bounces. All you want to do is you want to take your ball and try bouncing as much as you can with your forehand. I know it might be hard and don't worry if you drop the ball. You want to just, if you drop it, pick it up and try hitting it again. If this is too hard, another alternative you can do is you can hit it one time, let it drop, catch the ball, hit it again, and you can just repeat this over and over. Again, if you're indoors, just make sure that there's a decent amount of space around you and you can practice it. Again, it doesn't require too much movement, so space should not be too much of an issue. But if it is, we do encourage you guys to try going outside to a safe place. Now we'll be doing the forehand bounces, but we'll add movement. Again, this is actually a pretty hard exercise and we and I don't expect you guys to get it first try or doing it without dropping. Instead, if you guys drop the ball, just again try hitting it and just keep hitting it until you drop it again. If you cannot maintain a good bounce, just you just want to hit the ball, let it drop, catch it, hit it, drop, catch it. But you want to do this while moving. Again, this is an extremely hard exercise to do if you're stuck indoor. So what I want, so what I want you guys to try doing is go to a tennis court if you can, or at, at least try going outside. And if you can't do that right now today, it's okay. Just if you're inside, just try standing in one spot and bouncing the ball. You want to make sure that the stuff around you is far away from you so you don't break anything and just make sure that you don't hit anyone or anything now we'll be bouncing the ball against the ground called floor bounces this drill is kind of like dribbling a basketball but instead we're using our tennis racket and a tennis ball this drill is another good way of just getting a good use to the feel of your racket. As you can see, it might be hard and if you cannot maintain the bounce, you want to catch the ball and then you want to throw it back down, hit it, catch and you want to repeat it. Again, if you are indoors, make sure you have enough space to do this without hitting any other objects around you. Thank you everyone for your time and I hope you enjoyed today's lesson.